Hello, 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 and welcome to another voiceover vlog. Today I'm going to be sharing with you my method for swatching. I typically only do this if I know I'm going to be knitting a garment that requires a fit. Maybe not a precise fit, this is not a scientific approach to swatching, but it is something that works for me. It's pretty flexible and laid back, kind of a relaxed gauge swatching technique. And I want to share that with you guys. So um, if that's something you're into and you'd like to learn a little bit more about an easy way to swatch for size, then stick around. I'll be swatching today with this cake of Fiber for the People yarn in the Hemp Merino Sport base. This is the Copper Sand colorway and it is going to be one of the skeins of yarn I use for my next um, sweater project, which is the Chloe sweater. So now that it's all caked, I think I'm ready to get started. But first, let's have some tea. For today's swatch, I'm going to be focusing primarily on my stitch gauge as this particular project is a top-down raglan and my row gauge is not quite as important to me because I can adjust the length of all of the parts of the sweater simply by knitting fewer or more uh, rounds of the fabric. So I'm just going to be focusing on my stitch gauge for this swatch here and I'm going to be casting on the recommended number of stitches for gauge which is 22 stitches and then I'll cast on a few additional stitches just to make up for the relatively loose stitches that form on either side of a swatch that's knitted in the round and I'll show you how that works in just a moment so now I have my needle size here I'm knitting this with the recommended needle size and if I like the fabric of my swatch, I'll just keep the needle size and based on my stitch count, I'll adjust the actual size of the garment that I choose to knit. I feel like I tend to prefer the fabric with the recommended needle size and don't really want to mess with that. So I typically will just knit my swatch, count my stitches, figure out how many stitches I'm getting to the two and a half inches and then determine my size for my garment from there. So um, let's go ahead and get started casting on these stitches. Once I've casted on my stitches, I'll knit across to the end of the row and then that's where something different happens in comparison to knitting a swatch flat. Because I'm knitting this to replicate knitting in the round, I'm going to be doing um, a little something extra at the end of each row. Now that I've made it to the end of my row, I'm going to pull the stitches from this needle all the way to the other end of the cable to the other needle so that I can begin working the next row without flipping my stitches over 
because that would be what you do when you're knitting in the round. You never turn your work, you just continue around and around and around. So what I need to do is pull up the working yarn from the left side of my stitches at the very end, and I'm still going to use that, but I need to make an allowance in my strand so that I don't pull too tightly on that back end of my stitches. So I'm gonna pull a little bit of slack from my working yarn and I'm gonna clasp it between my fingers here to give it a little bit of tension so that when I begin working with it, it doesn't slip right through and create a little bit of a tug on that left side of the stitches. So there it is in between my fingers, giving it some tension and then I can go ahead and begin knitting my next row. Once you've made it to the end of several rows, you're going to notice that you have these really loopy floats in the back and that's completely normal. Those will end up, um, when you're finished with your swatch, you'll snip right through those so that you can lay your swatch flat. But that is how you knit your swatch in the round. And you can see here, this is a completed swatch and I have several of those little floats that have been snipped right through on the back so that my swatch can be laid flat. This um, creates little loose stitches on the end there that you wouldn't really want to count in your gauge. So that's why when I cast on, I cast on a few extra stitches just to make, make up for those loose open stitches on the ends there. But now that we have our swatch knitted in the round or knitted to replicate knitting in the round, we can give it a little gentle blocking. I like to just steam block my swatches if I block them at all because I feel like it, there's less tendency to um, kind of overstretch the stitches. So that's what I'm gonna do right now. I'm just gonna set this up for a gentle steam blocking. Once my swatch is dry and set, I'll place my ruler right over the top and I will count my stitches. I will shoot for 10 centimeters or 4 inches, but sometimes I'll just stick with 2.5 inches and see how many stitches I'm getting in that space. Depending on whether or not I'm getting fewer or more stitches per that span or that length, that will be how I determine which size of garment I knit. I don't adjust my needle size, I just adjust my garment size based on my swatch. And it's really just as simple as that. And because you're working on a size as you go garment, in this case being a top-down raglan, you can kind of adjust your size as you go should you find that your gauge changes throughout the course of your project. But this is just a really simple way to um, get a good jumping off point. Once I've determined my gauge and my size, then I set out to caking up all the rest of the yarn.